This is just like the the, All right, well, the since, awkward silence since, between. Since we we first we started streaming incorrectly at first, uh, we already talked about a little bit of an. This is going to be a second game podcast talk show, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're gonna try and cover a wide variety of ups. Um, you want me to go first? Jump right into it. Yeah, why not? There we go. Now we can be seen. Am I loud enough? I'll just, I can start making. All right. Pull it, let me pull it like this close. Talk oh. into it. <laughs> Fuzzy. All right. So, so let's start off, let's start off with talking, um, a newer release on a game here, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, there were very mixed reviews, not, not like mixed reviews, but like a lot of things within the game that they were just like. Like, fans of the of the series were just so let down by. Um, on IGN, they talked about how they only released uh, two two new alien races. Not a lot of like gameplay differences. Like there were a lot of cool things that they did with the uh, like the tech tree and, and space and stuff. But like there were a, like there were main instances of the story that were like almost a hundred percent repeated. Really? <laughs> from the original series what? and i i actually have not started playing mass effect i plan on doing it um i wanted to play andromeda but i uh um so you, you follow you follow this uh this protagonist that is uh name on here somewhere uh who cares no one knows no one knows what his name is yet <laughs> no one's played the game long enough no uh <laughs> But yeah, they they uh, apparently their facial animation was hugely upsetting, and uh, they just did they repeated a lot of things. Uh, didn't introduce a lot of new aspects. Um, there were a lot of cool things that did happen. Um, um, there uh, the open. You know how uh, what was that game that was super open world? No Man's Sky. No Man's that Sky. That kind of yeah. flopped. They took some some uh, some things from that. They where they uh they did um like all the worlds that you went to you could basically travel around the whole thing, but uh things were very repeatable like there were just like random instances of of fighting and stuff like that nothing crazy insane like No Man's Sky has like weird ass glitches you can find and stuff yeah um <clears throat> and Mass Effect Andromeda just kind of it was just like it was just not what people wanted I guess like. Other than like the letdown that was the the facial animation, they had <laughs> they had a lot of things that were repeated. They had a lot of parts of the game that were weren't really fresh ideas and stuff. And uh, uh, there were a lot of bugs at launch. Like you know how your normal MMO, like anything from like Elder Scrolls, you can expect. Yeah. From like they had they had like copious amount of uh, <laughs> bugs and stuff. Um, so. Me personally, I would still love to play the game. I'm sure the game's story is, is great, and people still get um, give it good reviews, in spite of like these these. I mean, facial animation is not even that big thing. I'm not even one person that well, cares I mean, about you, graphics. Yeah, you don't care about graphics though. And I mean, I'm not a huge Mass Effect fan. I have like the same disdain for Mass Effect as I do like Dead Space. I won't play Dead Space, but I will watch people de- play yeah. Dead Space because I like the story. But like for me, like we live in a world where animation is key now like there's so much going on right like with technology and advancements you have the ability to do that so if you're going to do it what my assumption is that they made an effect to make some of the animations better but then that close-up shot that shot that like they could have done more work on they just dropped the ball what what i did uh what i when i watched some of the facial it looked like they had tried a little too hard um to kind of uh, like catch every single aspect of the face at the same time, like you know how like when you're talking, you have everything fucking moving. Yeah. Okay. Look, like, it looks like they tried to capture too much all at once. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like like ser- let's just okay, let's pull up a video. It's terrible animations. Is it really that bad? This is... sweet advertisements, not even from us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so is this right. a Mass Effect? They have a bow in Mass Effect? 
What is that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that? Little waddle. <laughs> they made they made the get the in game gameplay pretty cool. Um, but it's like, kind of creepy. Like, like, yeah, it's kind of creepy. Like they, it's like they tried too hard on some aspects of the facial animation, but they didn't. <laughs> that <long>. yeah. <laughs> That's a win, honestly. Like I'd play the game more. Um, my only question here is, um, that is not from Mass Effect. That is. This is a completely different game. That's um, from that uh, zero. No, what is it called? It's I don't remember. Zero I wanted to play it. Dawn, zero Dawn Horizon. Horizon Zero Dawn. That's what it's called. Um, yeah, it does look good. But oh, oh yeah. But like here's he's like <laughs> saying like here's the difference. Like you can see the difference. Like this is what I'm talking about. Is <laughs> this is what your competitors are doing over here, and this is what you're doing. Right. Like I remember the first Max Effect game. It doesn't look any different from the first Mass Effect game. Yeah. Whoa. 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 I think we just crashed Chrome. Not important. But yeah, but like, I mean, honestly, in reality, it's not that bad. Like, if you look at <clears throat> animation of like older, older stuff, not even games from like prior to like 2005, you can look at some games that came out and they don't have any facial, like they just have lips moving kind yeah. of, and it doesn't even look bad. <laughs> like, I feel like these guys just tried to take on too much and like missed some key parts they should have gone for in animated parts. I would probably agree with that. Um. Other than that, I mean, I've I don't know the game. The game still doesn't seem that bad. So basically, the question is, are you gonna buy it? I I'll probably get around to buying it. I'm definitely gonna wait wait for it to drop in price though. Um, and will you buy it on Xbox or PC? Um, I mean, I have all the other ones for Xbox. Okay. So and they're I think all backward compatible. Yeah. So I can play them all on X One. Okay. So I'll probably do that. Because, I mean, like, for me, if I bought Mass Effect Andromeda, I'd probably buy PC because I know there's a modder out there that's going to fix that. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? mean? Yeah, the, I mean, they're gonna, they'll release patches with what they can do on, on X1. On, uh, on everything now because you're always hooked up to the internet. Patch. Like, True. Usually, usually, like, for, I mean... <laughs> it's really messed up. Even 360 games, they would, did you, take, they would wait, take a while too. Did you ever um on PlayStation 2? Did you ever have PlayStation 2? Oh yeah. Do you remember um I I had two games where the company literally like just mailed me a new copy oh, and really? it was like version two of the disc <laughs> because there were so many bugs with the game. Yeah, I, I mean, thought it was hilarious. A lot of times, a lot of times they just uh like bring this makes me think back to uh <clears throat> Sega Genesis. Like there were three different versions of Sega. Genesis, oh yeah. You know? And they just all had like minor fixes. That, that was their version of releasing patches, uh, rather than yeah <laughs> being able to give you downloads and stuff. Yeah. So I mean, that's overall the game doesn't look that bad. Um, a lot of gameplay elements looked cool within. I heard that you couldn't um you couldn't hot swap your guns mid action, but you could hot swap your freaking um like. Skills and skill trees and stuff whenever the fuck you want. Really? Yeah. So, like, that to me doesn't make sense. But, like, they made the action more you can, like, run and dodge. You can jump, like, before in the first three. You couldn't. Okay. And stuff. So there's some good things, some bad things. So it's, like, this small, like, like follow adding run to their system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or, like, that time when Pokemon added run, run and you're like, why, why do I even need a bike anymore? <laughs> I can run inside. Um, Pretty funny. So the other thing we're going to talk about is the Vega GPUs coming out. Radeon's trying to compete with NVIDIA and Intel. So Ryzen has just released. Pre-orders are out. People are like getting their hands on Ryzen chipsets, yeah. which is pretty exciting. It's funny because the Ryzen 5 isn't out. Like, no one has had been able to touch the lower end one. Mm. But the Ryzen 7 has been like underperforming in video games. But like overperforming in content creation, yeah, which is kind of neat. Like you think about it, like people are like, "Oh, the 1080p scores suck," and then like you go to 4K and it's like, it's better than 1080p by slightly. But like when you really look at the price of it, it is performing on par with the 6950X, which is a thousand dollar CPU. Yeah. Um. Party is here. Nolan Rich has arrived. Hi there, Nolan. Um. But yeah. So the they're releasing their, and I don't know who's seen this yet. I'll just pull it up here. 
the Radon Pro website or the VA, VE.GA is the name of their website for That's this. That's so creative. Right? <laughs> um, the Radeon RX, which is going to be the RX Vega, which is their highest end GPU. Um, people are s- speculating that it's going to be like on the price of the 1080 Ti, which is like $700. Yeah. Which, if, think about it. Like, how much is the Jesus. RX 480? Oh, dude. I-, I think you can pick up an RX 480 from a third party manufacturer for like three, four hundred dollars. So that jump to like seven hundred dollars, like there's that's a gap. A, that's a very large gap. Like four hundred. I mean, you have four hundred dollars t- is you could just run, you could just run SLI or Crossfire, and and probably be fairly compatible. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I was thinking. Because I mean, like you can get two ten sixties for like eight hundred bucks t- total, and that, you run them in SLI and be completely fine. Yeah. Um, what I was interested in is like they're just their next generation compute unit. I love how they always use NCU, um, stuff like that. And, yeah, Nolan, you can ask tech question. I'll, we'll, be, we'll answer it. Um, the 512 8-bit ops per clock, like, that's that's on par with a 1080. The, it's weird because it seems like they're directly trying to compete with NVIDIA. Yeah, I mean, when the 1080s first came out with from NVIDIA, um, there were a lot of issues I know that people, people when they got them, they were just like, like they were like, oh, this isn't like much different than what I'm already running. <laughs> like, uh, and uh, I'm not like one to like buy new tech right away. Like, I definitely let it wait and, and out and let them fix. It. That's a big tech question. Do okay, you? <laughs> I know, I know English. I'll read it. So, <laughs> doesn't a hologram of a mathematical equation? With a lot of data, create its own mass and cause a distortion mirror of the sub key, or basically a projection of the dark matter coding. What the fuck? <laughs> I think you're mistaking us for like engineers. <laughs> yeah, that's a. I don't think it's a tech question. I think that's a theoretical mathematic equation programming question. You did programming. I did a little bit of programming, <laughs> but like nothing crazy. But yeah, the th- the things I find I funny about back to you. the things I find funny about the Vega release is the fact that they're pushing pro like pro level like content creator type stuff, which is what they've been pushing with Ryzen, mm-hmm. and the fact that they're trying to get this um, and they've been trying like they've been trying to trend this on Twitter the Radeon Instinct, which is basically like Nvidia Deep Learning, which is like deep thinking for computers. I think that like you know they've never ever competed. Part of toe to toe with Nvidia, mm-hmm. they used to be like the major manufacturer, right. and then Intel t- like they started to like fall behind Intel, mostly because their choice to make everything like open source. Yeah. So like this little attack at like hey we're gonna like we're gonna come out swinging this year, is kind of nice, but at the same time I'm kind of worried for them, but I know that like I feel like Intel and Nvidia are gonna lower their prices to compete. Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> hopefully for the good of everyone <laughs> uh I, I think it's good i think it's good that they are uh that they're going to be more competitive against each other um similar to how like microsoft or or like uh, google and, and apple are all super competitive with each other yeah making everything um and and stuff but uh as long as as long as um they can amd can radion do its magic and make some that they have been offering a little better, like I mentioned before, that their crossfire, yeah, things like that. If they can if they can make just like all around make their company more, um, like with better offerings for for gamers, content creators and stuff. It's great. Yeah, I would agree because for sure, being able to stream and play and like on cheaper hardware would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I mean, I mean, a lot of people are trying to break into streaming and stuff. I mean, we are even so and it's it making it more accessible to other people more people and stuff is great i mean getting content from people is awesome isn't that what about the internet or what the internet is all about <laughs> all right so the next thing we're going to talk about is the uh <laughs> the flop that is the nintendo switch not really flop they just had some weird <laughs> issues like like weird issues like um we could we can honestly just talk about their uh 
They're what I don't even know what they're called. The little remotes. The Joy Cons. Is that what they're called? I think they're like, called. Yeah. Like you can just like like move the screen really quick and it'll fucking slide off. <laughs> like the other thing. And, I, and then there, I watched a video of someone that had it and it wasn't put on the right way or something like that. And they they plug it into the charger and the thing just goes. <laughs> for like two minutes at the guy and he's like uh what do i do like i remember um i i was on twitter and someone like bought someone i follow bought a tw- switch and like when they put it in the dock there's like it looks like little rubber things i think on the dock and yeah. when they slide it into the dock it scratched the screen oh shit. like they had just opened it and like put it in <laughs> and i was like holy crap that's so like, funny like and the other thing is like um the the company I use for my skins on my phone, D brand, yeah, they put like skins on the Joy Cons and stuff, cool. and the the finish, like the plastic, started peeling off. Oh jeez, of the device. <laughs> so like, you know, you probably still have your Genesis, right? Oh yeah, I have a Super Nintendo still. The, the plastic's still fine on those. It's not peeling. <laughs> yeah, it's off. not rotting away. <laughs> So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that just goes to show that, like, uh, a lot of times people, they, like, especially now, they don't build things to to last as much as build things for as cheaply with as much power as they can, you know? Yeah. To kind of get it out there and stuff. Um, But, like, breaking the Nintendo Switch down, okay? You can think about about it this way. (laughs) Hey, Missy Gaga. Uh, You can think about it this way. The... Okay, you start with the Wii, all right? Yeah. Wii was, Wii was like, uh, the, they tried, they, Nintendo was like, okay, screw everyone else. We're trying our own thing. <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it, like, wasn't great. Yeah, okay? I would agree. And they had the Wii U. Which w- I didn't even, the, I didn't understand what the fuck the Wii U was. The Wii U, like, to me, the Wii U was like, um, it's like the Wii, but it, it was comparable to the generation that was out at the time. Yeah, like the all of the the hardware and stuff was which was much better and very comparable. Like the HD on the Wii U actually looked better in some cases than. Oh really? Yeah, and but they also opened it up to it made it very similar to the DS. Like it, to me, the Wii U because you had the screen on your controller and the screen you're looking at, yeah. and then you could just play on the controller. But it reminded me of a giant DS, okay, <laughs> where you have the the bottom touch screen part and then the top. And then they have the Switch, which basically just took that <clears throat> idea and ran with it. I think the biggest problem with the Wii U was the fact that I didn't know the Wii U was a separate console until the Switch came out. I thought the Wii U was like something that oh, you like bought that went with your Wii. Yeah, I thought it was like something that came with the Wii. Yeah, I think a lot of people thought that um, at first. <clears throat> uh, but I'm not even sure. The Wii U wasn't even out that long. Like, you know how like PS3 and yeah. 360 and stuff, they were out for like eight almost nine years before a console came out they uh the nintendo friggin they're just like well that idea worked but like we didn't like it that much so let's just whip out another one <laughs> but i i like the fact that the wii u is going to offer um out outside um sources from game developers oh really so, like they're gonna you're gonna be able to play things that were because usually like usually you get a nintendo console and you're like okay well i'm gonna be able to play like your, your basic Nintendo games, and then some weird third-party Nintendo things that are like, well, this is kind of fun, but, like, think, what is going on? I think it had Bam Margera's on the Wii. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like things, BMX, things like right? It's like that game where you just, like, run around and you just roll things up into a ball. Like, I don't even Katamari. know. Katamari. Yeah, that, that <laughs> like, weird games like that. Nintendo's always, like... Well, kind of, like, they, I think that, like, Nintendo... When they do third party, they get a lot of arcade games. Like Katamari is an arcade game. You know that you have the ball, like Super mm-hmm. Ball Monkey. Yeah, yeah. That's what Katamari is. It's you roll a ball across the screen, across the board. And, yeah. Um, I think that a lot of the games they pick are, are like that. The other thing I heard that the Breath of the Wild's on the Wii U. Yeah, it is all. And I was like Wii looking. You can rent a Wii U for like ten dollars a month. Rent. A- yeah, you rent the hardware from somebody, they, and then uh... it's. I thought it was cool, and the Wii U is actually like not that expensive. So like, no, the Wii U is not. Me like looking at it, like I'm the, gonna buy a Nintendo the Switch. The Switch wasn't even that. The Switch came out. I think it was. I think the Switch's price is. I mean, that's a lot. Like for me, like three hundred dollars is a normal console. Three hundred dollars in that. Well, wait, you gotta think about Xbox when the one. when the Xbox One came out. It was five. Yeah. Okay, and then they lowered it by a hundred, uh, just because. They they lower by hundred just because to to like to get rid of the connect, but uh yeah it's only three, only three hundred. Okay, so that's not bad, but I mean, how much is the Wii U now then? 
Like, I could probably go out and get a used Wii U for like 50 yeah. bucks, probably, right? That thing, that thing just said, what is this? Yeah, no one knows. Uh, let's see if we can find a price. Straight off there. Right here. Oh. So it's 200. That's refurbished, though. So. But, like, think about it. If yeah. I, I bought, like, if I go to, like, Second and Charles or something and bought a Wii U, it'd probably be cheaper. Right. Oh, yeah. If you go to Second Charles, you probably find it way cheaper. So then the biggest question for the Wii U is does it use the same, like, the Wii controllers? Do those work with it? Um, no, I think the controller is that big TV screen thing. TV screen. That's... Which I don't hate, it's but it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, I I think it's great that the Nintendo is finally branching out. And they're gonna let because like before you had you were like okay I can buy this Nintendo and I got like Smash Bros maybe a Metroid game if you're into Diddy Kong that true and you had like the classic Mario and Zelda game that was going out uh, but now they're gonna open it up to where other people like you can play the Skyrim remaster I'm pretty sure okay. I think it's already out um it it might be I don't know um but yeah you're gonna be able to you're gonna have like a ton more options. Which I think is great for Nintendo. They're finally realizing, oh, like, need to be more open. Well, I mean, look. like, look at all of their <laughs> other Arms systems. The greatest, uh... Like my favorite, my favorite console from the from Nintendo would probably be the Super Nintendo, which had thousands of games. And then like GameCube, like the game library for Nintendo usually is a lot better, and their handheld game library is massive. I don't know, like, they to me when I think Nintendo. I only, I never think any any of those third party type games. I I've never played any of them that I really thought were great. Like I stick literally stick straight to, like I'll try other games, but I stick to I like Metroid. Yeah. I like Legend of Zelda, obviously. Mario and Smash Bros. And that's that's like <laughs> that's I don't Nintendo. Really, like, I don't really like Yoshi's Island that much, and I don't <laughs> I don't like Donkey Kong. I like Donkey Kong. I liked um it. like I don't delve into anything else. Maybe you're a Mario Party, but like that's still in the Mario universe. <laughs> so Yeah, totally. Um so then I mean, I think that they have a chance to do something with it, but I think there's a lot of problems. Yeah, the I think they the issues that they had, like those aren't those aren't like usually have when they launch a console. It's like software, not it's hardware. Like software issues, not like oh, uh, the controller might accidentally slip off if you move too quickly yeah. with it in one hand. Like, those are things, those are some weird issues. Uh, I can just imagine, like, a kid walking down the street and has a Switch in hand and the Joy-Con falls off. And, like, he pulls it, like, picks it up and the Joy-Con's just gone. And the dad's like, what the hell? Turns into <laughs> sand in his hand. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I'm, I am sure, I'm sure the Switch will, will off and stuff. I'm surprised that it sold out. But, I mean, they also, like, they didn't make that many. They just... They released like a press release, I think, yeah. saying that they're gonna make like 16 million in the next year. Oh like they and they didn't make a lot to begin with, I guess. So that's why they sold out very quickly. Have games. I know that it was wow, are, Breath yeah, of the Wild. Are, yeah, Breath of the Wild, I know was on. Um. Breath of the Wild, it's like a rebranded Mario Kart, I think. Then type lineup in the search. Yeah, there's a back button on your mouse. Um, yep. Keyboard is so strange compared to what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you took a laptop keyboard and you're like, yeah, that's what came with my desktop when I bought it. That's why I bought a new keyboard. Um, lineup secretly great. Here's an article. Yeah, I think it was Zelda, a rebranded. I'm gonna say rebranded Mario Kart because Bomberman. I think it's totally rebranded. The they're really pushing the Skyrim remaster. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, Skyrim is. Skyrim came out what six? Super years Bomberman. Ago? Yeah, Super Bomber Man. I'm that's I'm I I'd actually I, be excited love, for a new Bomber Man video. It. I'm tired of these these Just it. The new guitar hero was kind of floppy. That's the other one I wanted to play was I am <clears throat> Satsuna. It was a Square Enix game. One two switch is like 
Yeah. Little fun game. That's it. Like, look at all these games that they have together. I mean, this is only... This is only launch. Ugh! This is only launch. Um, but... But still, like, all of the games that they have up there, they have a couple... This the is ones that cool. don't like look a, bad. High speed racing. But they're all like those arcade style. And then they have <laughs> ads, 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 ads. I am Satsuna is probably that was one of the ones I looked at. It was from Square Enix. Um that I thought about getting the Nintendo Switch for, but then I found it was on like PS4. Yeah. And I was like, if I if I just buy a PS4 and a Vita, I have the same thing as the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't even me on this. <laughs> but like <laughs> Think about it though. A little handheld controller. I can have a f- Blu-ray player. I actually Switch used uh like these like this they went back to like a different style disc. I like Dang, Oh, I it's not digital? Know. No. Uh, I totally thought it was all digital like Hold on, hold on. Um disc Marks the death of game discs. I wanna, oh yeah, they turned to this. They, they, they just basically, so it's little SD cards. It's, it's basically like a larger version of what they have running for the uh, yes. Okay, like which, it's not bad. Like I don't have anything wrong with cartridges and stuff. I mean, this is like the newer version. Jesus, god damn, this is like the newer version of cartridges. Well, there's there's Lord Taylor for you guys if you want like designers and dresses. I don't know. It's like the newer version of cartridges. Uh, I don't have any problem with it at all. I, mean, I would agree. But it's... I would, it would be cooler to be able to just play Blu-ray stuff like, right? Like a normal. Like that was my whole like thing. What like, you'd want. okay, so yeah, two ninety nine for the Switch. But if you think about it, like, I'm an entertainment entertainment lover, and I've never had a Blu-ray player, but I do like the quality of Blu-ray. So like buying a PS4, so I have a Blu-ray player, and then buying the Vita, so I can play games off my PS4 on my you know what I mean? It's basically the same experience because I can play off the PS4 wherever. Yeah, like the X, the X1 it has Blu-ray, and the yeah. X1 has all of the that go into it as well. Like you can run your. I can even play it off my computer, can I? Yeah, you can play a so lot like, of X1 games right off your computer, which is great. <clears throat> and they also have the X1 has it's all like that's where the name comes from. Everything is like one thing. Like you can run your cable straight through, and you. For Netflix, for cable, for literally everything you need to straight through your Xbox, like it's one giant enemy. Yeah, that's and that's really nice. So another thing we're going to talk about is curved monitors. This these have been blowing up the ultra wide monitors, and like my my only deal with it is these monitors like start off at like three three hundred three fifty dollars and go up to like a thousand dollars, and that's a lot of money. Like I have three monitors set up and like. Josh sees it's pretty big it's and I like it there's a disconnect between the screens but like whatever but I a lot of people are like really switching to these ultra wides as their main thing and I mean like I can see it but I don't understand the point of gaming ultra wide like would you game on an ultra wide uh, it, it probably would not be bad if you're playing like a like an MMO or or something along the lines of that has RPG elements and stuff. Yeah. But I feel like I feel but like because like, a lot of times if you're playing FPS, especially if you're competitive about exactly. it, exactly. If you have a larger monitor, it's it's worse. You want you want things to be small so you can like quickly look and move to everything. Yeah, you'd have to like increase the sensitivity on your mouse just it's, to get across it. It's more, I I feel it'd be probably more more of a casual thing, but casual for like. Upwards of five hundred dollars. Yeah, and like what to get like a hundred forty four hertz ultra wide right now is like six hundred dollars. Yeah, and then if you want G Sync, you're looking at like twelve hundred dollars for a a monitor, Mm -hmm. and at that point you might as well just buy one of those ultra wide TVs. Right. So and to me, I mean, curved is is okay. Like I don't really see a benefit of curved, but it it kind of feel like like if I were using that, it'd make me feel like I was in the bubble. Like if yeah i think that stuff. curved is kind of like my effect here where i've turned the two outside it's in it yeah. allows you so that you don't have to like turn your head as much to look at the screen because oh. i know like anything over like this 27 inch anything more than a 27 inch monitor you have to like turn your head to look at 
and it that would get right. that gets annoying. That's true. Um, I see the practical application for it for content creation and yeah, more, stuff like multitasking. More space for for doing things like that, which which is great. Like I think that's awesome. But but uh, for on like from looking at for like actually you know what actually probably would be really cool on it? if you if you're really into watching um things watching just watching things on your computer rather than netflix yeah it's probably it might be better nice. i could imagine i know a lot of like if large um what they'll do they have those bars the black bars on the side of the screen. yeah if you're watching like the hd uh yes or something yeah or something, they, like the screen like your tv screen goes way out here and they have like this much is actually being Sides are just black bars. Thanks for the follow there, Romani. And he, he this um, Romani agrees about the FPS pl- being irritating on ultra wides. So yeah. Oh I yeah, mean, yeah. I've 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 heard that a lot. A lot of times for if you really into F- FPS games, they will just stick with the old like a CRT setup <laughs> that's tiny. And- and if you're like if you're like super hardcore, like I've been having trouble playing CS:GO because I don't like playing on this monitor right here because mm-hmm. it's it's really big. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd rather much play on this one. Right, I definitely agree that it probably looks better. Like it probably looks cooler, but like when it comes down to it, like it might be it's like too much. Like you're, you're like okay, let's yeah, calm down with all of this. Like it's like when they um let's see when they released uh some, what was something that. Was- so over the top and you're like okay like do we really need this um actually i do have something with that <laughs> dell's 32 inch 8k monitor that's coming out um right like like, <laughs> like when you buy a 4k tv okay you your the amount of things you can watch is very limited is very like it almost not youtube like basically just youtube something not even everyone <laughs> has the ability to upload in 4k on youtube like i think you um, 4K uploading and stuff and 4K stream need you need like you know how you need verification to oh no have ads and stuff you can you can go straight to it everyone can upload it at 4K if you can shoot in 4K you can upload it 4K because okay, my parents just got that 4K TV right? yeah okay and they not even all cable offers satellite TV like, I even offer 4K for you. The only <laughs> like, the only provider that's 4K ready right now is DirecTV. Like yes, I looked into that's it. That's what they have down there. Yeah, it, but it's not even everything. Like and there's four channels. There's a very very limited amount of channels, and you have Netflix, and you can do it in YouTube and stuff. And net, Netflix is only like Netflix has very uh, specific things as well. Like it's one of those things that like like when they're coming out with something like that's 8K. Do you really need like? Like we we already we already are struggling to catch up with 4K content to be able to watch on and stuff. I um I but actually saw this on in a review at CES. Um, the 4K monitor, the 8K monitor, it uses two Display Ports. So there's two That's Display Ports going into this monitor so maybe to run it's it. Just maybe maybe what it is. Okay, they put a small gap, a pixel wide gap, <laughs> in between every pixel. And they have one uh, monitor, me... and then the other monitor is just shifted one pixel to the right, and you're just looking at the same thing twice, just slightly longer. <laughs> How great would that be? <clears throat> um, I'm, it's funny that you say that because at CES, this is this is what happened. Um, and I'll I'll pull this video up in a minute after the ad. Go into theater mode too. So, at CES, they were talking about. Look at the line in the screen. There's a line right here. <laughs> so I was like sitting here, like, did they? Would they just be so weird about this? They just threw two displays together because there's <laughs> like massive. he's talking and there's a line right here. And I was like, holy crap! And then, like at the end, it looks beautiful. It does look beautiful. It's one of those things though, like. Like if you tried gaming on that, I feel like yeah, that's the whole thing. Is like that line straight through every single thing that they post up there. A DVI can only handle 4K, and I don't think that I I like the Thunderbolt three or USB C connector. Um, that can only handle 4K. Right. And that's like that's cutting edge right now. That that's more throughput than DVI right now. A lot of uh, phones are trying to swap over to that for their charger and. 
Because, yeah, Did Thunderbolt we, 3. Just crash? Yeah. It, Google Chrome again. Chrome just keeps crashing. We don't like Google. Um. But, yeah. <laughs> so, besides Dell's 8K monitor. <laughs> yeah, that that's just, like, one of those things. Like, <clears throat> like when 3D TV came, TVs came out. Like, I'm one person. I don't even like. You know that. I don't even like 3D. Yeah. When I go to the movies. Like, I wish I could. I wish they just had movies in IMAX. Like, not IMAX 3, like. Just IMAX. That. And and then they released it on TV, and I was like, I'm fucking kidding. I, I had... <laughs> Do I need that? I remember, like, like sitting I, at Best Buy, need that? and my dad's like, we're going to buy this. I'm like, we're going to use it once. We're literally going to use yeah. it once. Oh, that, you, okay, okay, the 3DS. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of friends that have 3DSs. I don't know. I don't personally have one. But they don't... don't they're, you turn on the 3D feature, and you're like, yeah... My eyes are hurting already, <laughs> starting to bleed. And then they turn it right back off. And yeah. They're like, okay, we're not gonna use this anymore. <laughs> like, I I know like one of my friends bought it because it folds, and he could put it in his pocket. Like that's the I mean, only reason he bought it. Yeah. yeah. That's the only reason he bought that versus yeah, but, like, the 2DS. The, the, with how large the 3DSs are, um, like a, a freaking Vita is almost the same. Yeah. It doesn't fold. Uh. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is like the 2DS is fine for me just because. That's what I honestly want to get a 2DS I, just because I don't play. Like, handheld games very much at all and i don't need to fit in my pocket anymore <laughs> like, I, I i'm had, not a kid <clears throat> i had a ds Lite, right yeah i still do but uh the i only had two <clears throat> games for it really Just two the entire time I think the I had... ds was out before 3ds came two games i had pokemon pearl and uh phantom hourglass i never Zelda. had any pokemon you know what game i had animal crossing that's the only I... game i played on ds <laughs> okay eh, it's respectable but 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 then i was like i could just sell my ds and get a 2DS, and then I'd be able to play some of the newer games and still be able to keep... Because like, I don't care about the 3D yeah. feature at all. I don't... Like, that's beyond... I'm like, uh, uh, uh. So you just built a new computer. Right. I mean, actually, it was... A year ago. About a year... Well, actually, a little over a year ago, yeah. You bought an i7, right? Oh, yeah. Which, I think yours is a 6-core with hyper-threading? I think so, yes. So... You spent a lot of money on that. That's like a twelve hundred dollar computer, right? Yeah, but I went to. I mean, plug for Micro Center. Um, I <laughs> went to Micro Center, and everything I found there was either bundled or had a deal on it or something like that. And it was way cheaper than anything I found online. It was crazy. So let's. So I want to. I want to show like. Out. I want to show the Ryzen. So the Ryzen five is coming out. The fourteen hundred and the fifteen hundred X, which is the overclock, like the one that everyone's talking about overclocking. Um. 169 for a c cpu that's like that's cheaper than yeah, that's, that's really cool. intel's four core right now and then like 249 for their 1600x which is would be um which is six cores that's 12 not, threads that's what you have super expensive at all i think i got mine cheaper i think i got mine for 200 okay but i think when it when it when i bought it it was I want to I want to say it was supposed to be almost 3 but I got it bundled with my motherboard I think yeah yeah and they they like just like we're like okay we'll just cut half the money <laughs> the motherboard was also cheaper like it was crazy but yeah like $250 for and, and it's actually pretty fast like nor like I remember like Danny's Pete one which is a 6 core with hyper threading which he got for like it was basically the same thing as I did, in, but you went the AMD route. He went AMD. That one, the the max boost clock on that, I think, was like three point four gigahertz. This one, this one starts at three point six and goes up to four. Right. Which that speed is like that's what hindered AMD was not having that speed. So that's kind of I think that's like a huge thing. Um, yeah, this goes back to what we were saying before. If AMD can bring offer more things to like bring some star, more stuff to the table. Such. I wanted to show you this too. Ubisoft wants oh. to make an Assassin's Creed into a television series. I I love the ending for some reason. For some reason, <laughs> I'm totally for this. Actually, I, I I am too. I I uh I've yet to see the movie, but I've seen other movies and stuff that they've. Seen. I I am a like a fan girl when it comes to Assassin's <laughs> Creed, even though like the most recent ones have been kind of like dog crap. It, but you know another thing that came out here. I got something. I don't even know where Google here, Chrome I'll, is over here. I'll pull you a new tab. Okay. Grab a tab and I take it over to you. Look at that. So, but yeah, like ever since Assassin's Creed Four came out, 
I I'd been in love with the idea of like an Assassin's Creed show or like entertainment designed around it because Abstergo Entertainment was like they were making movies and it's like dude like VR movies like the idea of like immersive movies around uh, the Assassin's Creed universe. So so I'm gonna fangirl over Assassin's Creed. I already this was one of the things that they talked about. Um, oh yeah, when, I forgot about this. When they were first discussing where they could go with Assassin's Creed before, I think even before Unity came out, they were talking about we could go to ancient Egypt. And actually, Empire, the name of what they think this one might be called, was one of the names they actually were <laughs> thinking of and stuff. And I'm I'm really glad that uh, I don't like games that release every single year, um, <clears throat> Activision, but uh, they uh, they get like ruined real quick. Yeah. Like I loved Call of Duty, and then like very quickly I was like, oh god. <laughs> like, what are you doing? God. <laughs> All right. But then Assassin's Creed took two years off, or took a year off, because they were like, okay, we need to get our shit together. Okay. And and now they're coming back with this in the, like, I mean, obviously this is just one little picture, really, two pictures that they leaked here. And it's not crazy. Uh, I think that, um. I'm, I'm just, I'm happy that they, they, they waited, because, like, they were just pumping out games. Like oh, Ubisoft is one of those huge, huge things that they have. Yeah. Like, they have like Ubisoft Montreal. Like they have all different. Like they can have like can have like five, six, the works and all release them. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think that's bad. But like to calm down on <laughs> releasing. Like I don't. I'm not like over the course of a year. Like I'll play the same Assassin's Creed game. For like two, three years, like I'm fine. With that. I, like, I mean, I still play f- uh, the fourth one right now. I've, right, I've played through on the PC just because I wanted to get up to where I was on the Xbox. Yeah, one of one of my favorite gaming practices when people release games is uh, is uh, like where they where they just simply just waiting in between. Yeah, like like uh, one of my other favorite um game series is uh is Gears of War, and they waited about three years and two. Yeah. And then, like, um, about Halo. Halo didn't, Halo didn't pump out, like, eight games in the course of eight They years. also, like, five times said they're never going to make another Halo game again. Right. Halo 3 came out. This is the last one, guys. Then Halo, um, was it Reach? Yeah, Halo 3, then Reach. And then they're like, this is the last game, guys. Actually, like, it's it might just... have been ODST. Yeah. Either way, like, they just, like, this is the yeah, last game. They have a good thing. Like, Halo is such a... It's one Kingdom of those... Hearts waited five years, which, yeah, that's true. Kingdom Hearts... Right. I... And uh, I'm waiting. I'm wa- I'm waiting. Like probably like in 20 years, we'll get Kingdom Hearts three. <laughs> it's it's like it's the new Half Life three. Right yeah, now. I was just about to say. In, in Half Life, <laughs> uh, I think they waited a little bit longer than five years. <laughs> yeah. What is the give or take? Like Half Life came out in the, in '98, I think. Right. That's the your orange box. Half-Life? I think it was orange box release date because it wasn't it wasn't released as. Half Life. It was no, released no, no. as the orange box. No, that was Half Life no, no, Two. Episode Two. Half Life One released it. I think was. I think it was really ninety. I want to say it was ninety five or six. Ninety eight. Oh, I was right. right. You were right. And then two thousand seven. So like almost nine years before they yeah. released well, the second one. I don't think. Uh, and they didn't even release it as its own game. Well, no, no. no. The orange box was just a collection. Um, look up. Look up. Uh, Half Life episode. Episode. Half Life Two. I'm pretty sure Half-Life 2 came out a year before. Or... 2004. So, 2004. so three years before. Okay, that makes um, sense. But still, from 98 to 2004, that's six years. Yeah. And, like, and that's, like, one of, like, that's another series that, like, everyone knows about Half-Life. Yeah. I've, I've personally never played Half-Life 1 or... Or all the way through episode two, but like, or all the way through uh, Half Life two, but like, it's it's one of those games that you just like know, like yeah, it's like a. You know what I honestly think, like, kind of messed up that little meta there is um, esports. Like League maybe, of Legends well, is different. If you, think, if you think about most esports, they don't release a new game. How long CS? Well, yeah, but like CS Go catch the shit out of it. <laughs> but those two and games are stuff. those two games are like they were heavily focused on PC, League of Legends right. and CS Go. But then you have Call of Duty, which is played professionally. That's true. And well, well, Call of Duty originally wasn't on PC. It wasn't played professionally. 
Yeah, and it started to be picked up as professionally. And if you look at it, most people that played it professionally played it on PS4 or Xbox One. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like CS:GO where you had a computer. So like patching, you know, a game disc. We've we've talked we talked about this earlier. Patching like physical media was is a lot harder than patching digital media. Right. So I think that's like you know, well, we want to change the entire mechanics and make the the whole competitive scene more challenging. And then they just release a new game. And I think that like. Every right. year they wanted because League of yeah, Legends, like you, like there's you, a new patch every year. Of Starcraft, they didn't really do patches for Starcraft. They were just like, okay, um, here's an expansion yeah. <laughs> and stuff, which I, they still kind of do, but they still also release patches. But when you think of okay, you want to make your game relevant. Esports, sports. So they can not only in patches, okay, because we've gotten some weird ass patches because we both play, we both play League. Uh, it's probably our our biggest game we yeah. play. That is a, an esports type game, and they like you. You read on some patch notes, and like they they fix things. And you're just like, <laughs> wait, that, was anything wrong with that before? Like, what are you trying to do? Like, were they just they bring up new metas and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah, and it just makes the the flow of the game um, as a meta kind of go like this, and then that way it kind of stays relevant. I mean, some people get tired of it. And, but like at the same time, it keeps. I would agree. Because especially if you're someone like me that likes to, likes to uh, just do strategies, try new things like that in a game like that. Yeah. Where it's just constantly changing. It's great. It's and really I think cool. like the, this this idea that patch it and expand it instead of making a new game, like think about like Grand Theft Auto. It's good and bad. Good and bad. Like Grand Theft Auto has been out since 2013. That's like, yeah, and they've released so many things for it. I'm like, and it's still a relevant game because of that. And I'm, I, that's one of the games I still play. And it's one of those things like I really like thought about. I'm like, I bought this game on the Xbox 360. The Xbox One didn't exist. Yeah, yeah. And that like that kind of like I like. It blew I, my mind a bit. I like the fact that GTA has released things, and they release it all for free, too. Which is cool. I yeah. Mean, there's some things that you can buy. <laughs> I mean, but, like, uh, their, their whole little pay structure there is, we're going to release this really cool content and make it, like, worth $10 million to, dollars yeah, in but game. But you have to play our game for uh, you either have to a play, year like, of out-of-game life. <laughs> you have to either play the game forever and build money or spend, like, $1,000 to get the new stuff coming out. Yeah. But, uh... Thanks for the follow, Roman Rye. The the thing with patches, though, it's it's good because like a lot of games, um, especially now because developers try, to, well, the, no, publishers, yeah, try to push them, and developers are like, no, please God, don't. Uh, <laughs> they have the ability to to patches and stuff, and uh, I kind of like it because it takes, um, like you can have games that are slightly broken, and then you pay for a patch. Like I don't even like I, it's kind, it's almost dumb now to buy a game right when it first comes out. Yeah. Rather than just waiting, like, not even a month. Like, you can... And most of the issues are fixed. Stuff. But but now it gives the developers, like, okay, we get some extra leeway. We could be broken, which isn't acceptable, in my opinion. But <laughs> it, it takes away from two other things that I hate, okay? A game that is broken that is never going to get fixed. Okay? okay. And DLC. I hate <laughs> DLC. Like, if, if you're going to release DLC... Like, especially when you release the game and they're like the game's not even out yet and they're already talking about like, yeah, we got all this cool DLC we've already planned and made and stuff. I don't know really why we're not putting it in the game. <laughs> we just want to make money. more money. It's just, I want more money. It's just to me. Yeah, I, I agree. Just, I hate DLC for that specific reason. That's why I, lo I love the way, like the model that GTA yeah. and Rockstar does really well with their DLC practice. Um, And think of patches. Like when we first started playing League, okay, it was season and like the yeah. people that have been playing since beta okay it's basically like like every champion they release is another little pet like that'd be five dollars of dlc right there if any any other game true you know and that's just something you don't have to you don't have to you have deal, deal with, with there so I think yeah that's like cool i would agree um on the topic of like dlcs and stuff um i i kind of have a love love hate with them i like that season passes are out Mm -hmm. Where you can like yeah, spend twenty cool. bucks and it's basically like getting you get everything 
for twenty bucks. So you're basically like you buy the game and then you buy the twenty dollar expansion. Yeah. Funny funny thing about season passes, I will wait for all the DLC to come out. Exactly. And be like, okay, do I like this? Like check out reviews. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna buy the season pass now, and then you just get it all for a super discounted price. I I've <laughs> wanted to get back into the division. You've played the division. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I haven't. I just recently got it. I haven't purchased any of the DLC. Mm-hmm. But, like, people are saying that's the content that's really good right now. But, I mean, I haven't even done, like, Dark Zone stuff. Like, I, don't, yeah. I just got to level 30 with this account, and I'm like, ah. That, that brings me to another thing. Talking about the Division, <clears throat> I read an article uh, just a couple of days ago um, about, it was about, it wasn't about the Division. It was about um, For Honor. Okay? Oh. And it was talking about basically how multiplayer-only games just freaking flop. Like, the, <laughs> the player base in uh, over the course of i think it said a month or just under a month of for honor drop even in beta beta was beta was way up there their numbers from beta where they are now after it's been because it's now i think february ish yeah uh 14 uh the 14th um they they're they've gone sick down 64 percent holy crap of constant players and stuff and the same exact things happen to the division and the same exact thing happened to Titanfall, Evolve, all of those multiplayer only yeah. games. Like they just like they're not bad games, but they just like they have nothing that keeps you there. Like you play the multiplayer and you're like, oh, I, I kind of like it. Yeah. But there's no story. <clears throat> there's nothing that kind of draws you in other than like trying to get your revenge on this guy that freaking was like uh uh spawn camping you or something yeah. like that. Like there's nothing that really creeps or gets you in there and like and i'm sure ghost recon wildlands is probably going to be very similar it's got a different turnout it's like it's like a like a four person type type co-op type multiplayer well that's only. exactly but like the division though right but the division you play against other people wildlands it's just you and three other people <clears throat> you can play wildlands so well like okay so the division has the two spaces the dark zone which is like could be a mishmash of multiple people right but you're like your party is four people and then there's like the the story mode or the campaign mode, um, that is only four people. Like you will only ever play with three other people. Yeah. So like it's the kind of the same thing as that, mm-hmm. but like th- that's the question is, Ghost Recon Wildlands is coming out. Looks like an amazing game. Well, I mean it's already. Yeah, I played the beta it? for it. Yeah, it came out March seventh ish. Okay. Um, and I played the beta for it and I liked it, but. Being like a multiplayer only kind of feel to it, the I mean yes it was only in beta but it didn't have anything in the story that was like that like that grabbed me like it was all just like it all just uh, it felt like basically felt like you another title from Ubisoft it felt exactly like Far Cry but with a like a larger map and then you had the ghosts element to it so like in. In respect to that, like, this is a $60 game. Mm-hmm. Like, I would say Grand Theft Auto is more fun with friends. Oh, yeah. But there's, sure. there's like, solo aspects to it. Is this a game that, like, if you're buying, like, this, like, one of the things, like, I'm I sure, do. I'm sure, because they they have the ability to play it solo where you don't have to worry about other people. Like, you can play it solo and you, okay. have, you just have your three your three other teammates that you kind of control and stuff. There are, there are going to be people that, like, just play it solo. The other thing is, like... Is this a game like and you I've done this before where you buy like four of them to and then give them to your friends and just so they'll play with you? Yeah. Is that like that kind of thing? Like do you think you, people oh, would do that? I can see people doing that. But like could you imagine buying four copies of like old version that comes with this pass, the deluxe pass? Like see, how like how expensive it's a hundred bucks. Is that? It's a hundred dollars. Yeah, like that's four hundred dollars you're dropping on one game just to uh basically buy friends. You know, yeah. Like, a little much or like you want the collector's edition for all your friends like you you're that into this game you're gonna spend 150 dollars per friend yeah, or 160. i just i just it's one of those practices in games that i like i don't hate but they need to refine it like like because like titanfall titanfall wasn't a bad game but they, they had a little bit issue like a, they had issues on servers yeah and the fact that it was multiplayer only just after i remember after the first three months just no one was like now nah, and horrible in the game they knew they messed up <laughs> so because they a year after they released they released all their dlc 100 percent for free they just gave it out to everyone and then they also came out with the <clears throat> or i'm thinking of evolve evolve now oh uh, yeah evolve with, came out free um well evolve didn't come out free it came out with a uh like it was basically a fitch a fixed version of the game 
that was uh it was called evolve uh, stage two or whatever and they just fixed a lot of things that people like because there were balance issues was there stuff why <laughs> <I'm> rusty <Pam. laughs> i didn't know you changed your name yeah that's great this bartle made me change it um Evolve stage two. Yep, and it's free. Mixed very see even very mixed reviews. See like um I think it was Rock Steady that came out of that Rock Steady new. They do you like I don't I, I oh no Turtle Rock and the, I don't hate games that come out that are uh, multiplayer only but they need something else in them. Yeah, I like, agree. Like um one, a game I can think of right now that is very multiplayer heavy um. Older game, uh, not older, but like Mortal Kombat X. Okay, Mortal Kombat 10. You can just fight. You can just play co-op. You can play by yourself. There's a ton of stuff to do. But uh, if you want to really, it's fighting games nowadays. If you want to really have a challenge and get good and stuff, get better. You have to play online. Oh yeah. You can't. You can't just like sit with like a couple friends and just swap back and forth. I would agree. Um, another tangent, the reviews on Steam. Do you ever read reviews for oh, games? Yeah. Oh, I leave reviews for games. <laughs> I, I actually leave really, I, I like take pride in uh, that I give out for games. So. I do like that they have reviews, but I do remember like, I, you know, I love racing games. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I was looking at, um, one of the new 20 or the F1s mm -hmm. and I was reading a review and the one review that made me like, I was, I was literally about to drop like 70 bucks in this game. The one review that made me like. I'm not buying this was and like anyone that knows Formula One racing would know this. Um Um they said it crashed the game crashes more than Molinardo. Which Molinardo's a racer um in twenty fifteen he had thirty eight career crashes during races. And that's not including his practice time crashes. Like yeah. he just he destroys cars. So I that was when I read that I just broke out laughing. Farming Simulator on Xbox? So, okay, yes. Xbox, <laughs> these are the funniest reviews I've ever, ever, I don't know if this is going to play or not. How do you even play? I have no idea, but they, what they do, what they do, uh, I wonder if this is, I wonder if these are, because I, I spent a whole night just reading Farming, farming Simulator, and like, there's a couple other games that are similar to us, just reading their reviews for it. <laughs> Literally the funniest thing in the freaking world. Uh, are they good or bad? Um, oh no, I mean, most of, most of them are just so overly sarcastic. <laughs> like, uh, hold on, hold on. I could never think, like... I don't think, none of these are, none of these are the ones straight from Xbox. They make like They're controllers for hilarious. Farming Simulator. They're freaking hilarious! I was die like literally, I fell on the floor laughing because they were so funny. Here, okay, here's another thing I hate. These oh control my goodness! Panels. Oh my god! Look at that one. <laughs> like I want a full like racing wheel setup, but like the, the cost of these things. Control panels. Like, if you really, like, you live in the city and you're like, ah, oh, man, I just really love the farm. No, and you have this in your room. You know what, you like, I was thinking of? Here. Remember our friend George, who lives on a farm? Yeah. I could just see him, like, because he... Every time he's not an attractor, he's in his house playing well, I farming simulator. I told him about farming simulator. He's like, well, that sounds fun. And he ended up <laughs> buying it, and he plays it on his computer. And I just I can see like oh him. Oh my god! He gets off the tractor, comes inside, and like just starts playing on gets, gets the tractor. Back, go, comes inside, gets back in his tractor. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like these things are expensive, and like I don't know how much is it. That's two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty dollars, right and that's just if you want like a real like instead of just buying a tractor, you're just like I'm just gonna buy this game in like a fake tractor. This is this and it looks it looks pretty cheap. It looks like plastic. Yeah, it doesn't look. I could crazy. I could totally see using this panel for aircraft games. Ooh, that would actually be fun. The the only simulator games I really enjoy are flight simulators. They are really fun, and they're very hard. I would agree. Fun. Flight simulators are fun. I like racing simulators a lot. Um, yeah, I don't. I'm more of a I'm more of into the arcade style racing where I don't have to worry. I like a little bit of both. Like like uh, <clears throat> I like it when it it does include some. 
some elements that are uh, that are sim related. But like, you like to drift around but corners. But I like to be able to drift and feel like a total fucking badass. <laughs> yeah, right. Um. Yeah. I I would have to say like I play Project Cars a lot. The thing is like, is that a simulator? Yes. Because it just got released free on X One. And I, I was kind of saving. Racing yeah. sims are very competitive. Mm-hmm. Like, you can play them as an eSport. But the problem is, like, I am, last year I was ranked top 10 in North America for Project Cars. Yeah. And I could never beat it. Like, I could never beat anybody else above the top 10 because I – and I, it's probably because all those guys have, like, an actual, like, wheel mm-hmm. and, like, you know, they can actually drive a car. The difference bet- in racing simulators is – if you have a steering wheel and as you turn, there's like, you feel the force on it. Right, yeah, yeah. That, like, you feel in a real car. You know, like, oh, I'm turning too much or I'm not turning enough. Or, like, you know when you're going to lose control of that right. car in the game. I just Whereas like, with the controller, there's no feedback. So you don't know when you're going to lose that control. Yeah, I have, like, a love-hate <laughs> with simulators, though, of all sorts. Just because I like the in-depth of them. Like, I'm, I'm all about, like, adding more depth to every aspect of the game. But I like gaming for kind of, like, like of it like a fan of like a fantasy like i can't fucking just race around outside in my car like i want my car to last a little bit longer than days. so losing it as a as like a fun way to breaking start. reality yeah to break realities so the last topic i want to talk about is um beta releases like i love beta games i i do and i don't for the same for the same reason of like releasing broken games like i understand that they're they're supposed to be in the works, but like, um, think of Kerbal Space Program. That's still considered in beta. I'm yeah, sure. it's, I don't think it's ever gonna leave beta. And, to be honest, but with like, you. that's basically just like, okay, we like, if you if you think of it that way, any game that has that release patches in beta, then like, where's the line? True. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, Minecraft. Minecraft is no longer in beta. Right, but they still release patches. They still release patches. And that's all all it, beta games do is they just are releasing things that come like Minecraft just gives you bigger things, you know, like you get oh, yeah. more like, to work with. They, they stuff. change and everything. When, when they're in beta, they, that's all they do is they just, they add new elements, change elements that are broken, things like that. Like it's nothing. So like this game, Astroneer, I think this like I find like game developers releasing games in beta mm-hmm. a lot of times. They do it as a way to, um, funding. Not even funding. I mean, it. it I mean, is, yes, funding because you like the game because you like, okay, buy well, into the beta. Some money for this. But the other thing about it is like I think they release it as a beta as an excuse to have bugs, and like the, the reason I say that is because I've played a lot of betas that you know the betas that flop are the ones that they don't fix anything. They release it. And then they say, oh, we're going to fix this eventually. Yeah. You know, this this is what we have right now. Pay money for it. And then when it gets released, it when we finally release it, you'll be the first one to play it. Um, stuff like that. And, like, there's games that I just – they're horrible. Astroneer is one of those games that aren't. Um, the, the fun thing about Astroneer is they're constantly updating and they're using the community. So, like, they have – Wait, that's what, that's what Kerbal did. When you log into the game for the first time, they're like, "All right, you've you've just signed up for our game. Go to our forum, mm-hmm. and you know, sign up at the forum to to keep tabs on everything we're yeah. doing." Like that's yeah, no, that's pretty good. I mean, because I mean, you got to think like when you send when you send people to the forum like that, you're not gonna catch everyone. Oh yeah, uh, but it's good. It kind of gives people gets people behind you. But you're creating that community, and I think that's the main thing that I like about games is community. And that's, like, things yeah. I like about Twitch and stuff is, like, you can build a community of people that are like-minded. And right. I think that's why I'm more of a social gamer than a competitive gamer. I don't really know what kind of gamer I'd consider myself. Like, I I love achievement hunting. Yeah, you're, like, a huge achievement hunter. I, I'd probably be, like, a... Like you know what you know on an Xbox 360 when you make a, an account and you have those four options to pick from. Oh yeah. You have like you have like a pro. You just care about winning. You have like the family one. Yep. You have the super casual one. What was the one I picked? Like, it's like underground or whatever. Or I like, was always underground. Yeah. I picked underground. <laughs> underground was like you care about like you're you're not all into winning, but you you're you're very competitive. And you yeah. Wanna, you wanna, like that's what I like. I like I like thinking. Like like I said before, strategy in games and uh, like hunting for extra cheap cool things. 
stuff like that. Yeah. So this is, I think this is our first, we're going to do this every Friday, right? Yeah, we'll try to. We'll try to. Yeah. Um, if you guys like this, this is what we're going to try to do more. It's going to be like a t- live stream talk show. We're going to bring up topics on tech and gaming. Um, might, not, might not be this long every single time, but we like, like we originally planned on just having four topics to each uh, from tech and gaming. We just ran with well, I mean, like, other things. It's an hour long podcast. That's right, pretty it's good. Not bad. So, I mean, if you guys like this one, you know, definitely follow. We're, if, if we can get a community, like I said, if we can get a community going behind this, mm-hmm. then I think. I don't know. Yeah, I would Do, love to uh, be given topics too, because I am that very, would be fun. I'm very opinionated on <laughs> a lot of things that are in the gaming and tech world. Like, like Rob, Rob loves tech so much. I love tech. And I like, love building he will, computers. He'll, he'll, he'll like, he'll like talk to me about some stuff that like he just he's like super into, super he finds super cool, and I'm just like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever <laughs> fucking heard of. <laughs> like, super opinionated. So if you want to throw topics at me, true. I will. That was funny. Like we'll when I was see. telling you about, you'll hear me rant about things too. Like, I was telling you about the Romer G switches and what I liked about them. You're like, I was like, that's dumb. They're like, just they're just a switch. It's just a switch. <laughs> like I, my, I don't even care as long as I can press the button and things happen. I'm fine. <laughs> like, so yeah. Like the curve TVs when they first came out, I was like, like what is the point? <laughs> like, I I can already see they already fix screens to where they're not like dimming on the side, so I can already be like way over here. And I can see this. <laughs> curved goddamn screen so yeah if you guys um, like this one you know we're gonna be doing a lot more of this if you guys are watching on youtube after the fact you know give it a thumbs up give it a thumbs yeah, down please. if you think we're stupid please so, let us know if you think we're stupid yeah give us comments yeah. berate us um as as we as we do this more the production quality will get better so he says no i say yes <laughs> you can hear a difference between my microphone and his microphone though maybe he worse he hasn't heard this yet i'll show it to him after so all right. See you guys. I was Rob. And I was Josh. So oh. we don't have a name for this yet. So <laughs> Thanks for watching. Ah.